Now for more, we turn to Bloomberg government senior defense analyst Rob Levinson. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rochelle. So as we heard, there quite the laundry list of goals that uh, President-elect Trump has. So break down for some of the key issues related to defense spending that really seem to resonate most with voters. Well, you know, there's with all that's going on in the Middle East and concerns about the South China Sea and things like that, there is a sense among a lot of American voters that maybe our national security needs some beefing up. And I think that's what Mr. Trump was responding to. Uh, and defense spending is, is fairly popular around the country. It also has an economic effect that people like. It's more jobs and things like that. So there's sort of a double whammy there, I think. Now, while on the campaign trail, Trump did lay out some of his military policies. Uh, we have some sound here. Let's take a listen. Immediately after taking office, I will ask my generals to present to me a plan within 30 days to defeat and destroy ISIS. This will require military warfare, but also cyber warfare, financial warfare, and ideological warfare. Now, that's a pretty tall order, so let's break down some of these issues. What's the likelihood that a plan encompassing all these facets can be achieved in 30 days? Well, I think it's, it's a little bit uh, strange here because that's sort of what is already going on. I mean, the U.S. military is fighting a war against ISIS. I'm not sure that a new plan is really so necessary. Now, they could come up with a plan that, say, accelerates the effort in some fashion, applies more force, but there is a very deliberate plan. There's an assault on Mosul right now. They're starting to hit Raqqa. So I'm not sure how much. They can come up with a plan, but they already have plans in place. So I'm not sure that they need sort of a new plan to come up with. Now, when it comes to beefing up the military, Trump mentioned a number of things, including enhanced interrogation techniques and basically having an army that's so intimidating that people won't even want to entertain the idea of waging a war. And obviously, that, that costs a lot of money. And obviously, that affects a lot of the people that we have ties with. So what's the international reaction been to all of this? Well, I, I think there's a lot of international concern about Mr. Trump. We've, we've certainly heard that. He's not a known quantity. Uh, you know, Secretary Clinton was a known quantity. She had been Secretary of State. Her policies were fairly conventional, kind of a continuation of the Obama policy. Trump has said a lot of things, some of them at times contradictory. So people are still, I think, trying to figure out what that all means for you know, international security. Now, the U.S. actually spends already more on its defense budget than any other country. And, but Trump says he wants to cut the red tape. He wants to reinvest it back into the military. So will trimming the waste be enough to offset what he wants to actually achieve in terms of his goal? No, absolutely not. I mean, you can squeeze some waste from the Pentagon. And everybody always talks about getting rid of what they say, fraud, waste, and abuse. But the reality is, for his plans, he's going to need a lot more money. And I think that's going to be the challenge. He also is promising things like tax cuts and big infrastructure spending. So where all this money comes from is going to be a challenge. And as you mentioned, uh, a challenge with some Republican members in Congress who aren't anxious to see a lot of new government spending. So that is the key question, is where does this money come from? Now, with that being said, Trump says that he pledges actually to remove the caps under the Budget Control Act that actually limits the, Pent the Pentagon spending over the next few years. If that happens, sure, he might be able to fund some of his goals, but what could the other fallout be? Well, I mean, the natural fallout is if he does all the things that he wants to do, the large tax cuts, the infrastructure spending, and the large military spending, he's going to increase the deficit. Math is math, and, and, and that's the way. Now, he thinks over time the economy will grow, increase government revenues, and, and therefore begin to reduce the deficit. But that will take years to happen if it does happen at all. So the basic, either he has to make a choice about which things he wants to do when, or he has to decide that the deficit needs to go back up because there simply isn't enough money to do all those things without borrowing additional funds. So when you say years, is this something that could perhaps be accomplished within his term, or are we looking very, very long term? Well, like the plan, for example, he says on the, on the shipbuilding, the Navy currently has, I think, 272 ships. The Navy's goal is 308. He says he wants to go to 350. That's going to take a long time to do. Even if you throw a lot of money, the shipyards can only do so much so fast to build these big Navy ships. So this would go you know, likely at least into a second term if they're in such a thing, and perhaps beyond to whoever's president after that. And just lastly, Robert, according to MilitaryTimes.com, studies suggest about 70% of today's youth don't qualify for military service because of issues related to health, educational personnel conduct. So what does that mean then for the future of recruitment and really growing this army that Trump wants? Well, the, you know, you're right, and those figures are there because of things like physical fitness and, and other things like that. But, but the kind of numbers that he's talking about in terms of increase in personnel, I mean, he said 90,000 in the Army. And then again, that would take place over a period of time. I don't think recruiting enough people 
would be a, a, a hardship. I think it's more about the money. It's not about finding the people. The military people are pretty well paid, and there's a lot of opportunity there. I think they could find the people. I don't think that would be as difficult. Okay, well, definitely, we have, it'll certainly be a case of wait and see, a lot of uncertainty there. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks Bloomberg for having Bloomberg Government Senior Defense Analyst, Rob Levinson.